but it's is uh, quite overwhelming that uh, uh, Professor Alam and also Professor Aziz is uh, 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 testifying about uh, University of Sarwanga and and I'm I have to thank uh, you for that because you are also my my um, uh, role model actually Professor Alam and Professor Aziz I I am grateful to have you uh, as being on my journey of education and academic life in Universitas Universitas Langa and and uh, I'm so happy to have you in Indonesia so that's why I also would I would love to invite you all to uh, go to Indonesia sometimes perhaps in this May because we have uh, our a great event with WASD as you can see WACD is World University Association on Community Development that hosted from Universitas Serlanga, but it is membered about 38 uh, countries, universities uh, that working together hand in hand in uh, community development. That's why I bringing you these topics actually to, to, to gain on the health technology that we brought in later on in, in Bali in uh, to, to, uh, 27 to 29 of May uh, this year. And the, uh, the topic will be the artificial intelligence impact for sustainable uh, development uh, uh, goals. So uh, allow me to share, of course, this uh, WST. Of course, we don't go f too far from SDGs, but may I direct into at least four uh, uh, numbers uh, uh, theme of SDGs that I can relate to the topics that I bring today, uh, AI for the SDGs. So we have known the, the promise of AI in healthcare is a personalized care. There's offering personalized, uh, accurate, innovative healthcare solution for individuals and provide pa patient outcomes. For me, as a cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon, I, I also dedicated to bring my patient the best treatment. Uh, instead, only for a clinical that I incise or so to the patient, I should understand what they need. They need that about the data, that they either file it uh, 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 incidents, frequency, and then uh, evidence. Because patients nowadays asking many things, not only that this disease cured by this procedure, not only that, but they are, will ask about the data. Doctor, what you what you can what can you tell me about this disease? How how this uh, uh, treated better? What is the the indication to do this? So we have uh, to answer this and answering that. Of course, we should doing by the technology, health technology, and specifically artificial intelligence for for us to to embrace now. And the challenge is the issue as is a data privacy regulatory compliance and also ethical considerations and um, also, also for the implementation of AI. And uh, AI in healthcare delivery uh, is a revolution in patient care, enhancing efficiency, of course. Our, our government in Indonesia uh, built DTO. DTO is a digital transformation office that is in Jakarta, but uh, I also one of the uh, counterpart uh, from the stakeholder of government, the ministry, to gain and to build the telemedicine, telehealth, also the artificial intelligence part to solve the problems of the people in Indonesia, that is 270 uh, millions of people. Also AI for mental health support. Uh, the last time, uh, Professor Aziz and Tim uh, uh, from uh, Australia went to Surabaya they saw uh, uh, the mental health services then, and it was uh, grateful for us to share how we how we treat the mental health uh, 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 patient or community, so that we can deal the problem by clinically and also by also the technology of course, and not to forget about patient education is is also need to be done because. If we want to uh, cure the patient, not only cure the disease, but we have to educate the patient. And digital transformation is actually across sectors, across the world. And healthcare industry, corporate sector, and education is this institution. And I'm, I'm happy that WESD itself is, 
is also an entrepreneur uh, empowering. I know that Professor Alam is also from the economics. So that's why I am very grateful on this community because we instead of we are only talking about health, instead of we are talking about research, we also gain on entrepreneurs. That is one thing that doctors, nurses might, uh, uh, might learn more actually. And challenges and opportunity of uh, telehealth implementation. Why I correlate these telehealth and AI? Because AI always be the, the integral part of telehealth. And there, there are the challenges and also opportunities. I will show you uh, uh, the, the exact uh, um, uh, example on my side on, on, on thoracic uh, surgery that we, we, we may address uh, the protection of data privacy, regu regulatory compliance, and also uh, not to forget by how to uh, improve the out uh, outcome of the patient. And what about the potential and practicality? Of course, the positive passion of experience, they will have the uh, incredible uh, uh, upgrading or value of technology and also uh, uh, potential impact and then enhance the core coordinations. And um, what about the sustainable development? Of course, uh, since we are dealing with number three, good health and well-being, of course, the upgrading of technology of health, of course, it, it makes the, uh, 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 the goals of sustainability is even more upgraded and with the patient care patient may uh, satisfy and make the uh, the health value more uh, 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 achieve, achievable and also not to fair, not to forget about the ethical alignment and in our in, in our part we are also uh, on the education part about the ethical we also uh, uh, will launch a book called uh, uh, medical ethics in digital health. So perhaps I will share you and perhaps in if, if it's May will be already uh, published, I will share it to you guys. And then, and it's in, in English. It is actually with a three three volume. Each of the volume will be 130 pages. So it, it, it will be a good thing to share with you. And, and um, AI and healthcare system, we're also talking about the uh, diagnostic accuracy and the system integration and uh, what about the future? Then actually digital health futures, telemedicine, virtual care, remote health management from app, remote patient monitoring, virtual specialized service, AI health healthcare, healthcare diagnosis, and also EMR. And our government now to, today um, of, uh, of push us to uh, get the EMR all around the Indonesia. So uses response of AI in healthcare, perception, trust, and safety. As we know, the challenge for the patient, of course, the perception. Not everyone, not everyone gain the technology. That is actually one big challenge for us. But since we are doing the collaboration with, with uh, our public health and then expert and then uh, nurses, midwifery, doctors, and also the government, we can make uh, the people trust it safety and by covered by the government regulation. And this is what I mean by uh, AI-based telesurgery, thoracic region, because I'm a cardiothoracic. As we can see in, in COVID-19, um, uh, in my hospital, University Hospital, Fairlanga, um, we, we learn by uh, collecting chest X-rays, thousands of patients that came into the hospital, and then we built the software of artificial intelligence. So that's why we can make easy that uh, we, uh, before we, we de determine that it is a COVID uh, uh, diagnosis, it is uh, uh, going to be a COVID prediction more, uh, major risk on COVID, and then major risk on the uh, uh, severe illness critically, and then we, we can uh, save them in early phase. And the potential application of AI in telesurgery, of course, the al algorithm of telesurgery, uh, AI uh, based on segment translation image in thoracic CT scans. AI can also measure the diameter of thoracic aorta with the high precision. Combination of human intelligence and the deep learning can be used segment of thoracic brachial pressures in CT scans. And um, uh, beside uh, AI and thoracic, I 
since I also the Secretary General of uh, as Healthtech Indonesia Association. This is the startup in Indonesia, health app startup. Yeah? And and some of this uh, platform is actually uh, built in, in Surabaya Universitas Erlangga that uh, we also tried to develop since 2019, since because I went to Utrecht, the Netherlands, and then uh, the the uh, uh, digital health initiative, and then we built the uh, in 2019 we collaborate with the government. We have the digital health class. This is the digital health class with, that I have with my students, uh, telling them the definition and then the uh, history, the books and the organizations and the challenges and. Furthermore, in 2020, we have our COVID experience in 2021, but we still pursuing the digital health class with the students. I hope we can pursue that in, in Bali in, in a bigger, bigger number of, 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 of uh, passion. And, and not to forget about the entrepreneurship and that also the, 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 the of WESD, and this is the uh, Fascola Information Communication Technology that we built. It is a very special Indonesia. This is addiction Indonesia is for kidney disease, chronic kidney disease. This is for diabetic food. And we built uh, medical food. Yeah, and this, this is the experience that we, we, we had from from zero and dealing with uh, COVID-19. We have our uh, experience to be the telemedicine for self-assessment direction. And in the lower back is also the virtual reality that we feel and the telemedicine. So that's why uh, our Ministry of Health had notified us as a as a as an element to be the the good health and well being sustainable development goals. So uh, I think uh, from my side that is all, and thank you for uh, giving me the chance, Professor Alam, and I allow me to once again invite you all to Bali. Twenty-four conference, collaborating WASD and WUSCD, and the topic of implementation of artificial intelligence in digital health to support sustainable development goals. So please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.